It's now been over 10 months since CNBC published this video suggesting that the housing boom was over and long-needed relief was finally arriving in the markets. This upload and many like it turned out to be dead wrong. Home prices continued to surge in the following months and today the median price stands at a record $400,000 after two years of parabolic growth. For average Americans, the dream of purchasing a home has become a nightmare. If prices continue to soar at this pace, by May of next year, the median home price in America will cost $480,000. The question on everyone's mind, how far can this really go? Will it soon be normal to see seven-figure listings in places like Michigan? In today's video, we answer exactly this by analyzing statements and data from the country's top real estate experts, starting with Redfin CEO Glenn Kelman. Kelman is a regular guest on television, and for the past two years, it's been nothing but smiles and profits. But following an unprecedented 90% fall in Redfin stock price and some new data suggesting a horrifying future for real estate, Glenn, for the first time, looks visibly nervous talking about the markets. When asked about the near-term future of real estate, he had this to say. And you're smiling even though it looks like the housing market is slowing. Tell me, Glenn, <laughs> in six months, is the market going to be better or worse? Probably the same. Rates Why? are probably going to 6%. Inventory is increasing. Sales volume will be somewhat fine, but prices are going to soften. So prices will soften, so therefore you, you'll, you're going to take, you're going to make it more affordable, basically. So you're going to make up on the, on the hike in mortgage rates. How about the dynamic, though, of people who have to sell their homes in order to buy another home? Why, if I have three and a half percent or three and a quarter percent now, the thought of paying six percent for a bigger house is really tough. That's where the market is really going to be pinched. So, so many people are locked into the home they're living in now by a 30 year, three and a half percent mortgage. So, they're going to stay in that property forever. Maybe they will rent it out. But if they actually want to move up, they are going to have a hard time affording the next place. If you combine interest rates with what's happened to home prices over the past year, the mortgage payment for a median priced home in the United States is up 43 percent. So, Buyers are saying I've had enough and sellers are starting to freak out a little bit. To hear this from Glenn is very shocking considering his job is to essentially avoid any kind of bad news in the markets. The state that sellers were quote freaking out goes to show just how bad the incoming data is. While prices remain elevated, price drops in certain markets are headed higher and inventory is jumping up as we're finally seeing the effects of interest rates. To help you visualize just how bad it is out there, here's a quick example from Middle America. In the suburbs of Cleveland, Ohio, you'll find this home in Lakewood. It's listed for $440,000 and using the mortgage calculator, we can see that if you're going to purchase this home with 10% down, your monthly payments today would amount to $3,250. Now this same home sold in 2018 for $310,000 when interest rates were much lower, which means just four years ago using 10% down, a buyer would pay around $1,900 a month. That's nearly 70% less and showcases just how crazy the market has gotten in recent times. And remember, this is Cleveland, Ohio we're talking about, not a hotspot like Austin, Tampa, or Phoenix. The worst hit areas, according to Redfin's latest data, is something called the secondary markets. These are cities where you saw a large influx of people coming in from the primary cities. For example, Sacramento, California, which has seen price refugees from the Bay Area move up into Sacramento seeking more affordable options. This sent prices skyrocketing. If we look at the trend there, you can clearly visualize a massive spike in price drops over the past few months. Kalman explains why. Can you give us some uh, nuance in terms of where the biggest slowdown can happen? We've gotten some de data points over the past couple of days. Toll Brothers had better than expected earnings. Those buyers tend to be higher end, higher income buyers. Williams Sonoma, um, guided higher. They tend to cater to a higher income household. What are you seeing in terms of the type of home buyers that will stay in this market that is more expensive? Well, it's the secondary markets that have been hit the hardest. So if you look at Tacoma, Washington, or Sacramento, California, refugees who leave the Bay Area or the Seattle area looking for value have been going to those markets and just sent prices through the roof. And now those prices are taking a step back. We're also seeing affordable second home markets like the area in Sarasota, Florida, really taking a step back on prices. So that's where the price reductions are most common. One reason that the Federal Reserve hasn't been able to limit demand probably as much as it planned to is that when Charlotte gets too expensive, people look at Charleston, South Carolina. When San Antonio gets too expensive, people look at El Paso. We're seeing home buyers being much more omnivorous about where they live 
and what kind of home they want to buy than they used to be because remote work has untethered them. So that's the one silver lining in all of this, that when one market gets too pricey, people look at another. But all of this doesn't answer the ultimate question. What is going to happen with prices overall in the next 12 months? We can look at stats, price drops, etc., etc., but overall, I believe most people only care about one thing. Will this bubble pop? Will we see a crash in prices? And in my opinion, I don't think so. And I'll explain why with a real historical example. If we are truly headed towards an environment of higher rates, we can look to a different era in US history where higher rates dominated, inflation was out of control, and supply shocks caused serious damage to energy prices. The 1970s. What if I told you that in 1971, a 30 year mortgage rate was around 7%, and for the rest of the decade, it climbed all the way to 16% in April of 1980? During this turbulent era, we experienced two recessions, one from 1973 to 1975, and another from 1979 to 1980. All while undergoing serious geopolitical challenges, unemployment at nearly 9%, and an unnecessary war that cost 280,000 American lives. Now with all that said, you would think that home prices were either flat or down, but the opposite was true. The median home price in America in 1970 was $22,600. By the end of the decade, it was 64,000. It nearly tripled despite higher rates, turbulence in the markets, and inflation. So how is that possible? Well, the truth is pretty obvious. People will always need somewhere to live, and with home builders failing to keep up with demand over the past 10 years, the supply shortage has gotten out of control. Millennials, the largest generation in American history, are piled up in a line attempting to buy homes that simply don't exist. With this massive shortage, simple economics tells us what will happen to the price. According to a NAR report, millennials now represent 43% of new purchases, and despite recent high prices, affordability from a historical perspective is still good. I know that's not what people want to hear, but take a look at any affordability index for housing, and you'll see just how great it is now compared to a year like 1980. Without getting too detailed, the affordability index is the only true measure of housing prices in my book. It takes into account median incomes, interest rates, and prices to develop a number worth analyzing. You can see that throughout the early 80s, the housing market was much worse than what families experience today. And despite this fact, it turns out that affordability says nothing about timing or if it's a good time to buy. Here's a graph showing the five year real return on a home purchase and you can see that right after the early 80s, prices shot up even adjusted for inflation. This just tells you that affordability tells nothing about the future return. Either way, there seems to be massive changes undergoing in the housing market with more and more experts leaning towards the bears. I would love to hear what you guys think will happen next in the markets in the comments below. As always, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it.